Lift yourself up on your feet. Let's get it on. Lift yourself up on your feet. Let's get it on. So I'm here today with my good friend, Mr. Wissad, and I'm here talking with him because in 2015, I ran for city council, and this young man here, he gave me a lot of history about the South Side, and I thought it was very eye-opening because the story that we hear so often is only the one that's portrayed to us in major history books, and that seems to miss a large part of the narrative, especially what happened to the people who were here and owned the the land originally. Mr. Wissad's great-great-grandfather? Yes. Great great grandfather was the one who actually did the rose window over at Mission San Jose. So I want him to give us a little bit more information. Mr. Wissad, will you introduce yourself to the people? Yes, I'm uh, Vincent Wissad, and I'm a sixth generation direct descendant to Don Pedro Wissad, the master carpenter that carved, and he's the one that actually built the church. And there's Spanish documents where I found all this information. And people, all you have to do is go to Spanish archives and you can uh, educate yourself about the history uh, that's going on here in San Antonio and not the history that has been put out about the Alamo. And the Alamo, for me, I don't even recognize it as a mission anymore because the way they portray it has been something bigger after the Battle of the Alamo. And it's really Smithson San Antonio de Valero. And that's what people need to recognize it as a Catholic church, not an iconic building because that battle wasn't even fought on top of that church. Mr. Wissad, let me ask you a question because with you having so much rich family history in the area, I wonder if you feel any kind of way when you're walking through these streets, just through the grass in this area, do you ever feel like, man, my ancestors were here, this was their land? Yeah, every time I'm around this, the, the Spanish missions, I feel a connection because my ancestors, the Spanish ancestors in me and the Native Americans, because the Spanish, my great-great-grandfathers married my great-great-grandmothers and there were mestizas. They were already mixed by the time they married uh, my great-grandfathers. And I feel that people say they got roots here in Texas. My roots are really in the ground. My ancestors are buried here. Oh, and hey, that was kind of neat. Your roots are in the ground because your ancestors are buried there. Oh, I've never heard that before. And a lot of people that came in in 1836 didn't have nothing to do with building the Spanish missions. They claim them now that they restored them, but they don't give credit to the people that were here, the native people and the Spanish people, for building something so now they can claim that they're, they're the ones that restored it instead of giving credit to the people that built the original structures. You know, what? I think there was once upon a time when you could say that ignorance was the reason that they were continuing with these narratives, that they were the ones who built it, that they were the ones who did all this, right? Uh, but I would say in 2018 that that's not really true because the Internet could open it up. Why do you think it is that people are holding on to this fake narrative? Do you think they need a, story, a fairy tale or something? What the hell is this about? And that's all that it is. When they came in here, they did so much destruction, and they're still trying to hold on that. They were trying to save Texas from Mexico, and they weren't saving Texas. They were really destroying it and claiming it as, as their own since it wasn't even theirs when they were here. If anybody that came in from another part of the world and they set foot in Texas, they're Texans. And the people that were born here, they don't even recognize them as Texans or Americans. They'd say they're Mexicans or Indians, and they don't really count. Yeah. But they need to read the history to find out who was here before the Spanish than after the Spanish showed up. Why do you think it's so important for people to know their history? It's, you need to know where you came from to know the present and then to know the future of what it's gonna, what's gonna happen to you. But if you follow their narrative, we're not gonna be around because what they don't want us, they don't want us here. They wanna turn this into, they say, the 
get America great again, and they're not. They they want to turn, let's do make America white again, and it was never white, because they weren't here. The Native Americans were here first, then the Spanish, then the French, then the English, and the the Germans and the Polacks and the rest of them didn't come till around the 1850s. What do you think? All right, let me ask you this question, uh, because it's one that I struggle with a lot. How exactly are we all supposed to integrate, you know, with this idea that uh, white folks are trying to take over and those kinds of things? What are we supposed to be doing in order to make sure that we're co coexisting peacefully? You need to look inside your heart. And whatever it tells you the right way, you need to bring it out and show people that if you're kind, they're supposed to be kind to you. Yes, yes. Because if we don't have that here, we're always going to be in conflict. Yes. It's going to be like water and oil it can never mix. Mm -hmm. And we need to have water and water, fresh spring water to mix and mingle and say, you know what, this is America that's come is great because we can live together without fighting. Yes. And you know what? I think so often people have the conversation about wrongs done, but we don't talk about how we're going to move forward enough in a way that anybody can really grab onto. So I like what you said about having that clear heart. And I think that's what it is to, to make the analogy with the clear water. If your intentions are pure, like the water is clear, then everything has the potential to really break through. And people can not only cohabitate, but create great communities because we've met some folks out in this area who I don't even think are from the neighborhood, but they're badass. Yeah. Not... Everybody in, in every part of San Antonio or in Texas or anywhere else is that if you think and your heart is clean and clear, show it. Yes. Don't show what, because somebody comes in a certain way to you, uh, put out your good intentions, and maybe they can start showing you their good intentions. Because sometimes they walk into a situation where they want to create uh, problems. Mm -hmm. And you show them that you don't want to have any problems. Yeah. We just want to live together. And, and this, is, this is America. This is, this is the place that even now some of them have their ancestors buried here. Yes. But mine have been buried here before the 1600s and and like I told you earlier about the roots you have roots here and my roots are in the ground my people been buried here for over 200 years and so, so to take that worldly wisdom from Mr. Wisad remember number one if you have roots in the area don't neglect it it's yours to care for it's yours to upkeep and number two if your intentions are pure, let them shine so that others can let theirs shine. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thank you for visiting us.